have uh, this public lecture today here at Catholic University. We look forward to more opportunities uh, like these ones. According to our levels of commitment and uh, enthusiasm into work, starting from here at university to to um, to to your interest in, in wanting to work with PMRC, we will show by the way you come and. Um, and the way you present yourselves. So I hope that we will learn a lot from today. Let me not take much of the time because I didn't even have a slot. I just came to see, to, to see how this will go on and how you guys will be inspired. Is that all we shall inspire? Okay. And this year, 2017, before it ends, projections are estimated at just around 3.5. So that is what we expect for growth. It seems like quite a low amount. For emerging and developing economies, how much revenue government has been able to collect and the spending. The revenues have underperformed by 10%, that is as of June 20%, as of June 2017, that is the government is basically collecting less by 10%. So this has been a result of low tax compliance and delayed implementation of budget measures. There are other budget measures such as electronic fiscal devices. We have a lot of taxes that go uncollected and that is a huge challenge for us. When we usually refer to improving tax collection in the informal sector, most people think you're talking about poor people. I always give an example of people that sell cars. Do you have a place here in Kalushi where people sell cars? Like a business place where things happen, phones, you can go there. Okay, I'm sure Kitwe has. What is Kitwe? It's Katon. Is Kitwe is also Katon? Yes. Edinburgh, yes, around that Edinburgh area. Lusaka also has Katunda, also have Dindola, they also have Checha. Yes, where that business happens. So imagine someone comes in, buys an IST for 30,000, sells it for 50,000. They are making it 20,000, right? But that's an informal transaction. That goes below the radar, meaning government is not able to collect that sort of tax. So as more and more of those transactions occur in the economy, you then find that government fails to meet its revenue mechanisms. I was asking the colleagues in Indola in the morning that how many of us actually request for receipts when we go to places? So many things that we buy. We're just in a hurry. In fact, you think the receipt is wasting your time. You just rush off. But what you're actually helping is you're helping that trader avoid paying taxes. So as a result, that then lowers the tax compliance. So that is with regards to the fiscal performance. Then we also look at the external debt. The external debt stock has risen. As of May 2017, it stood at about 7.2 billion, increased slightly from last year, December. And again, this has increased um, stock of new displacements. We've taken time to acquire wisdom and knowledge, and for that, I think you deserve a round of applause for yourself. So, do not be discouraged. I think what you're going to gain this afternoon is going to go a long way to help you in your studies and your endeavors. Just to help us understand the seventh national development plan which was launched this year in june that's a five-year plan of where zambia is going to be for the next five years helping us towards the vision 2030 where we want to be a very developed middle income nation and by that time it's me and you who are going to be in those offices to actualize the things we're talking about today so take that into mind you know that there are certain fundamentals that a country needs to reach for it to be classified as a developed and us in this case we put prosperous. And those that follow the Bible know that the word prosperous is associated with all things working well, positive, being rich. So this is what is going to make Zambia rich. So uh, some of the things that you notice is that uh, it tries to promote ministries working together, it promotes togetherness. That's why you see there is a multi-sectoral development approach because people have been saying that ministries do not really work together. So this plan actually has come to try and promote ministries to work together towards certain development outcomes that need to be achieved as well. The goal of the 7 NDP is to create a, a diversified and resilient economy for sustained growth and social economic transformation driven by agriculture among others. So we know that you people from the copper world know how much copper mining has actually sustained this country. So we've also been hearing about diversification for a long time now. But with the SNP, we noticed that focus has gone to agriculture. 
while there are a lot of programs, projects outlined, and also the sub themes of agriculture itself, from the usual maize, looking at livestock, looking at fisheries, to ensure that we become a food basket, basket of the of the southern region, and it's, it can be a reality with what is contained in the plan. And this is an important slide. It shows that this 7 NDP also has been, is being used by Zambia to help us domesticate all these international protocols that Zambia is signatory to. We have the sustainable development because I'm sure we heard of the SDGs then. I mean the MDGs. Yes. MDGs came to an end. Now we have SDGs. Now, SDGs are by the UN. They are for all countries. So as a country now, you have to devise your own strategies of how you're going to domesticate them. So you can't just say, no, UN is there, as we are Zambia, we are you will not achieve that, and you will not get funding from the UN to implement those SDGs as well. So we can find that through the 7 NDP, we have come up with strategies of how to domesticate the SDGs. African Union Agenda, we are also signatory. SADIC, Istanbul Program of Action, Human Development Index, Vienna 20, and also the COP21 and COP22 on climate change. Because uh, the social cash transfer is directed to the very vulnerable people in our societies. In terms of the number of people that are beneficiaries, uh, the households uh, are, have recently increased from about uh, 500,000 households to um, a million. And with uh, the new pronouncement, the Ministry of Community Development is working towards going well above that one million beneficiaries. Obviously, they are uh, targeting people that are very vulnerable, the aged, and then they also target the people who are, for example, uh, people that are physically challenged amongst us. So those people opt in and uh, they go to the district social welfare offices and they say, look, uh, I'm going through these uh, challenges and I would like a, a cash transfer. And then the process goes on. And then uh, with the exact figure that is uh, allocated, it's 70 kwacha. It was 70 kwacha, but that then it was increased up to about uh, 86 kwacha. And with the pronouncement that has been made, it's going to go to 98 kwacha, 98 point something kwacha. And then that is paid um, uh, within three months. So the beneficiaries get those, those amounts, uh, depending on the locality and also the administrative costs that the ministry has, they pay out those. In fact, I was hearing uh, last week, it was in the news, that uh, government has now signed an MOU with Zampost. So Zampost is going to be helping with the distribution and the allocation of the social cash transfer. So wherever there's a post office, anyone can get a, trust, uh, a cash transfer from there as well. And then the people who are disabled get double the amount. And uh, the people who are, for example, um, uh, mentally challenged also get uh, double the amount. So anyone with a disability gets uh, double the amount that has been allocated. Us as PMRC is to reach all the citizenry not just the big cities, but every person. No wonder even as PMRC will still go even to the rural parts of the country. So that, that's something that we'll still do. But we'll take Chief Funkana since uh, I think it's one of the areas they're saying we should visit, but we'll, we'll take note of that.